You kind of sus. I'm kind of sus. Yeah. Can I? I. I really hate that that has like taken off. Hmm. All because of a video game. It's kind of sus, man, that you're mad at other people. Hello, ladies uh, and gentlemen. My name is Hollow Tide, joined by Hostile Galaxy, and today yeah. this is off meta episode. I think three. Haha. <laughs> yeah, it's not really a topic of discussion today because we're just living in the moment. Especially myself. Um, I get married this weekend. Big, big ups. Big, big props to myself. I did it. Yo, pour one out for my boy Corey. Pour. R.I.P. Pour. And um. Yeah, so that's that's happening. That's a thing. And um Matt, Are you excited? I'm beyond excited. Very Are you are you scared? I'm not scared at all. I just want the day to be here so that we can do Nervous? it. No, not at all. Not no, at all? No, not even remotely nervous at all. Why would I be nervous? Isn't that like a normal thing? Don't aren't a lot of people nervous like the couple days up to the wedding? I don't know. I feel like this entire year has been <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. And um I'm just ready to do it, honestly. Tie the knot. I feel like I mean we've been together for seven years already. It's a long time. It's I mean, practically you know, we've lived together for two years i think at least two years so it's not like i don't know everybody's like it's gonna change blah 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 blah, blah. and i don't really think so i think that um i don't know like to me we've been it at that level good yeah feels and safe yeah yeah i'm gonna take care of you mm, yeah 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 she already does i'll fight her oh my god i'll but, beat her um, up bro yeah, so that's happening, and um, just been you, the last like two weeks. It's been like nonstop stuff happening for yeah. it. You know, like constantly being on the phone with people and stuff like that, trying to make sure everything's okay. And then there's supposed to be a storm this weekend, um, but the the chances of rain keeps going down. So that's good. That would be so terrible. You're saying you don't want me to rain dance. That would, I, you can Sundance. I actually looked up Sundance ceremonies on YouTube oh, no. and played them. And well, it seems to be working if the chance of rain's going down. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Could you imagine? I would be, I would be pretty sad if it did rain. I know it's like good luck and all that stuff, but meh. Isn't one of that like be the perfect 2020 wedding though? If just everything Stop. goes wrong. Stop it. Why would you even <laughs> put that out there? Anyways. What's more important. What's more important. Is after your rehearsal the day before, mm -hmm. you get to reflect at Chili's. Are you still going to do that? Are you just going to go to Chili's by yourself and just vibe? I'll probably go maybe the morning of the wedding I don't have to get to no. the place until noon. Yeah, and I'll just like... You're not going to eat, are you? No, 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 absolutely not. Okay, I was going to say, chilies before a wedding means you're going to have an upset stomach. Meh. Especially with all the nerves you're going to have that day. No nerves. I mean, you're calm and collected now. I've always been. Cool, calm, but cucumber, cooler than a polar bear's not, toenails. Like, you don't have to worry about anything going wrong at the ceremony right now. Yeah. Once it starts, it's like, hey, anything could go wrong at any point. Who's it going to be? Who's going to do it? Do you have any troublemakers coming? Absolutely. That boy Gabe's going to be there. Gabe, Gabe is the troublemaker. Gabe is the trouble. Shout out Honey Dip. Shout out. But more Boy, importantly, Honey Dip, Honey Drip. What have you been up to? Are you playing I work games? A lot. Um, not really. Kind of. I haven't played a whole lot of Destiny recently, just because the PvP sandbox is borderline unbearable. Um, you can still get a couple decent lobbies every now and then with people who still have a little bit of pride left and don't run 600 RPM ARs and a mountaintop. But PvE 
is also pretty boring for me. Yeah. I don't find like the low man challenges or like doing solo dungeons enjoyable at all. I've done them, but like there's no incentive to do it more than once. And so if you run with a team, like you're literally speed running everything. Like it takes 10 minutes max to do any of the dungeons. And then the seasonal. Have you played Destiny since the Halloween event went live? Uh, I did the Forerunner title. And then that, that that was just like the lore piece, right? Yeah, I just had to do like the mission thing. And then I got it and I wasn't done, so I haven't done. I mean, I don't. There's like. In my opinion, there's no reason for me to get like weapons that I will never use at this point um doing the force like festival of the lost yeah so like i don't even and i don't want to spend money on cosmetics that i don't think are worth money i know people think they're really cool and everything but i don't know i i just don't vibe very well with it i, I think that all the events are pretty much a cash grab anyways yeah 100 percent. so you know what bugs me the most about their seasonal events now in d1 you could there there were options to pay for like in-game cosmetics or there were in-game ways to earn a currency that you could use to buy the same cosmetics or you could just outright earn the cosmetics through engrams or at least in d2 launch you could get things from seasonal events through engrams there's like no way to do that now like all the good stuff i feel like it's purposeful too like every event they'll release five to ten ghosts five to ten ships five sparrows like three emblems maybe a handful of shaders but all the good stuff the things that are going to be noticeable on everybody's character at every second is always locked behind a paywall and that stuff seems to more likely than not look better than any earnable in-game gear or ornaments yeah and i feel like that is 100 percent purposeful and that sucks yeah it's like the the shadow keep stuff all the armor that came with shadow keep was pretty ugly personally yeah but the empyrean cartographer sets were like some of the coolest looking sets that we've gotten like they they actually looked really cool and i mean to this day what shadow keep came out almost a year ago now maybe i don't remember i still people i still see people running like the full set from that season just because it looked that good and like nothing since then has matched how it looks but you had to pay for it and that sucks I, yeah, I, I think don't, the company needs to make money. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get that, but I don't know, man. Like, I would much I rather like earn should, stuff. Right, but, yeah. There should be alternatives to getting that gear. Yeah, like, if why is that not, to... like, a level, I don't, I don't know how many levels are to the fours, but, like, if you got, like, you know random rolled stuff at level three five i i don't know but or that's, have a small that's chance another shitty thing like i wouldn't mind if the event itself was the same if there was a new loot you know i wouldn't care if this time the haunted forest is the exact same as last year which it is but it like added a new loot pool yeah or like you could actually earn like random armor rolls or whatever instead of things just being an ornament i would have really liked if it was a new armor set that way you could farm rolls there was replayability but like they added ciphers now in order to get your rewards you need to get an rng based item drop and it's for, I think, the only actual, like, rewards for the forest mm -hmm. are two ARs. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, they're the same archetype. Mm -hmm. Both 450s, which yep. are an o underwhelming 
AR archetype, especially in this meta. They're both kinetic, and we've had them both already. Like, why was there any in essence to add more I guess artificial grind yeah. to an already existing event yeah without adding more reward to it like they they made it so that you can't run it as often as fast as much but kept the rewards the same yeah I mean and by same it's kind of worse because you've had the same rewards for the past two years you know i think this i mean you can get random rolls this time i think you could get random roll, rolls on the Tech. werewolf yeah because i have but not the some with like story. rampage or something that i kept mm -hmm. and i get the sunsetting thing like oh i want to be able to use my bray Tech, you know maybe one time when sunsetting <laughs> happens. I don't know. I just... Right, to go through the story the first time. Yeah, all that stuff is super artificial, in my opinion, anyways. And I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade who are, you know, they're super excited for Festival of the Lost. You know, because I like Halloween events in any game. It's my birthday, right. and I like the aesthetic and stuff. But I just... There's so many things in the cash shop that aren't in the game to earn and i hate that like why not throw an emote in there that's like super rare to get in mm -hmm. the forest or something give people a reason to and i see a ton of people complaining that you know i have to go play content that i've already played for the past three years to get rng drops to be able to even go into the forest and get any rewards and i agree i think that that's poor game design i guess i don't know mm -hmm. I, I just feel yeah. like bungie has really leaned into the artificial difficulty and like time kept content by gatekeeping you out by making you do other stuff that you might not want to do but right it's i mean i don't know how do you fix that other than letting people go play it and get rewards it's kind of like i look at how they do the double nightfall drops and mm -hmm. how everybody literally loves it farms the shit out of it yeah and i just feel because like it's rewarding it is it's, it, it rewards the player's time yeah and i don't know why they don't lean into that much more than what they they do i feel like the amount of rng in the game already is absolutely astonishing you know like to get exotics and stuff outside of Zer doing his faded ingram you don't really get opportunities to to farm like that and i think that i don't know i just i wish there was more replayability for people mm -hmm. who want to to grind like that or you know lake of shadows is a, a quote-unquote easy strike but if you had um like I think the tree of possibilities or probabilities, whichever one it is, is a little bit more difficult. Takes a little bit more time. If it was like that, and you had to be like on your game and had to really be efficient to farm, I think that that's an okay thing. You know, like people have teams and communications, and you have to know how to do it. And there's also a time, like cost to it. So you have to mm -hmm. like dedicate time to being able to do a bunch of runs i think would, yeah would make it a lot more it would make it easier to swallow you know but then again i know a lot of people complained afterwards because you know they did lake of shadow so many times that their brain melted and it's <laughs> like do i really is that fun that's not you know super enjoyable you, you get the rush at the end when you see you get Dune Marchers, and you're like, what's the roll? And it's, oh, my God, it's not a good roll. we got to run it again. It's a 69 stat roll. Let's go. Yeah. Poggers in chat. So um, it's just. You, I'm going to cut you off. Okay. Do you think that Destiny 2 has become too inclusive? Yeah, absolutely. See, that's 
what I miss, if there's one thing that I miss the most about D1, it was the exclusivity between high end PVE or PVP stuff and your average stuff. Like PVE, you had your uh, hard mode raids, which gave you a different set of armor. I believe some of them actually gave you like specific perks to that enemy race you're fighting in the raid or the raid itself, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I th- I also think some of the base model uh, base armor and stuff had that too. But like there were adept weapons uh, for going flawless. You had ornaments and a different armor set. You got an emblem. You got shaders for going flawless. And you couldn't get that armor unless you hit those thresholds. And now, so like, I mean, back in the day when Trials first came out, when you saw people with pariah gear, you knew they were good. And when they had a full trial set, you knew they were good. Whereas now, if you waited five weeks and just got three wins... This, this is hypothetical or theoretical, I guess, because RNG plays a factor in yeah. like which things are going to be your three win. Yeah. You will eventually get a full set of armor and all of the weapons. You can get God rolls for all the weapons. You can get God rolls for all, all the armor and have a negative win loss ratio in trials. You can never go to the lighthouse and have a full trial set. Yep. And that bugs me. You can have a full rate set. Yeah, remember and when only D2 farm launched. one chest. Well when D two launched you could get the clan engrams and get raid loot and not do the raid. Right. And it's just I don't know, it's there's nothing in D two that I can look at somebody. And be like, all right, they dedicated a lot of time to this game. They're really good at this game mode. They're really good at this area or whatever. And I think the closest we get to that is titles. Like you said earlier, you got Forerunner today. I don't know what that means. But I do know that like when titles first came out, if I saw somebody who was unbroken, that means they were good at PvP. Or they recupped, whichever. If I saw somebody who has... Is it Conqueror that's for Grandmasters? Yeah. I know that they grind PvE. They're good. Grandmaster Nightfalls aren't that easy. Some of them can be, like, really doable. But others, especially at launch when they first started, like, it would take the best players in PvE. Like, Glad, Chevy... um, all of those guys and company like they would they farmed for like hours almost in order to get like their first full clear where it was platinum like they got all their shit done and it's like that was something that was challenging when i see people who have like the solo flawless emblem from dungeons it's like all right they you know they did that but there's very few and far between items in the game that let other players know their level of expertise in the game. And the sad part is the majority of it doesn't even look that cool. Like in D1, I remember the first time I saw somebody with Chatter White or Glowhoo as their shaders. And that that alone made me want to go into that raid and do it. And there, there's nothing like that anymore in D2. Remember the first person you saw who had not forgotten on in D2? Yeah, actually. I it was a friend. Did you think it did you think it was cool? Yeah, I was like, man, I remember seeing Luna's Howl in the trailer mm-hmm. and being like, you know? Cause they really do their trailers, you know, bomb tastic, and you're like, well, oh, that's probably yeah. extra damage and stuff like that. And Luna's had, like, and not forgotten, you you had to do something in order to get that high-end reward um, in right. terms of, like, damage or whatever. And I was like, yes, I I want to play comp. I want to to have that weapon. I want 
I want it, you know? It was it was a cool thing. It was more, like, I, I would almost argue that Redrix was better, especially in the sandbox it was in with uh, the yeah. Desperado yeah. perk and everything. Like, that, it's still pretty nuts. Um, yeah, that was during double primary meta, mm-hmm. wasn't it? I, yeah. yeah. Having something that had that TTK back then was, it almost broke the sandbox. But it was so hard to get. So, like, it wasn't seen as an issue. And then when Luna's and Not Forgotten came around, recubs really picked up in the D2 community. Because usually, like, recubs were yeah primarily for, like, Trials of the Nine. Yeah. You know, people didn't even think about doing it for comp. Yep. And then everybody saw how strong Luna's... I mean, Luna's was a few breaths short of yeah. Not Forgotten. Like, it was... At launch, Not Forgotten was untouchable by any other hand cannon. It's still amazing in terms of range, you know, in this sandbox. Yeah, it's really good. I can use it. I can absolutely use it. You have to change your play style a Mm -hmm. lot, and you're still going to get outgunned by auto rifles most of the time, even if you are reaching that peak TTK, it's still going to... You're, you're going to get melted or flinched or, you know, whatever. But, but like, and the, I, the, I, main, I, the main issue that I was trying to, like, drive home was that was the last thing that I think I saw somebody have. And I was like, I had a level of respect for them, you know, because I have a lot of really good PvP players on my friends list. Like, that's mainly what I play. And so all the good people that I meet are usually in that in that realm i guess yeah and so when i saw other people with not forgotten on too i was like all right these guys are good like it felt i felt like one of the cool kids when i when i had not forgotten because i got it maybe a day after world's first team and so i was you know there weren't a whole lot of people out there i was probably one of the first like 500 people that Mm -hmm. got it and so I actually felt cool. I felt like I had something that people would like enjoy. Yeah. You know? And what the very next season, like the whole matchmaking system and point system got completely turned upside down. And I know a lot of people, no shade. Yeah. But there's a lot of people on my friends list or on my timeline on Twitter that I've seen them play. I've played with them. They are not the greatest. They were able to get it. And that kind of, you know, it's not to like make fun of people that aren't good at the game, but when you're not good at the game, you shouldn't be able to get something that is a pinnacle PVP weapon. In my opinion, you should have to be at a standard to get certain rewards in this game. Yeah. No, I agree. But at the same time, I think we've kind of been conditioned to realize what the game is and is becoming. I think we watched the the new trailer for all the exotics, you know, for Beyond Light. And mm-hmm. after my, my opening moment was when they had the weekly bulletin update thingy and they were like, we want Crucible to be bombastic, crazy, catastrophic, death fun, you know? And I think yeah. that that kind of sealed the deal in terms of what is important to them and what they think is beneficial to their game, which is not gunplay, but the abilities and, right. you know, supers and stuff. And that's, f- I understand, I do. And, I th- I think that you are going to lose a large amount of the player base that plays mostly just PvP to play PvP. Like uh, myself, I play PvP because I enjoyed it. Um, a little less so now um, with how much abilities are a thing. But I just think that that's what they want all the exotics in the beyond light trailer are nuts i think somebody Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I posted a picture of the Titan gauntlet where you get an overshield instead of a barrier. And somebody said that the way they balance that is that you cannot use your Titan's jump ability, not just like the regular jump, but um, I, I assume like Thunder Crash, maybe, or the... I, I'm pretty sure the Behemoth Satis subclass has like some crazy jump ability, but I assume that's what that means, you know? Because if you just jump, like what you get an overshield, but you can't jump at all. You just run forward. I don't really think that's how it's going to work, even if they said it was a leak anyways, but I just think that a lot of those things fall under the category of being annoying to fight in Crucible. Mm-hmm. And we've been, it's been six years, seven years, however long since D1. And power fantasy and power creep are absolutely real. And you have to constantly try to one up what you've already done and released. And like, I get it. I understand. I just wish that. I don't know. I don't know what. I wish there was a game mode where there were no exotics <laughs> and like everybody yeah, had base was... cooldowns. I was going to say, like, I'm all for Bungie doing what what they do. They do really well. Mm -hmm. There's a reason Destiny is unmatched in the looter shooter in the looter shooter franchise. Mm -hmm. Like they they are really good at what they do, whether it's, you know, environmental building or, you know, building weapons, armor, you know, a little bit of subclass synergy based on armor and stuff like there's a lot you can do. And there's a lot that makes this game really good. Yeah. But you you do alienate a portion of your community that plays the game because it honestly. There is no other game that I've played where gunplay feels as good as Destiny, whether it's mouse and key or controller or whatever else you can play on. It just feels good, whether it's like and, and sound we know design, why. Like, like the amount of aim assist and stuff mm-hmm. it's it's there's a reason why it feels so good and i agree i love i love shooting weapons in destiny because it feels so amazing even in pve mm-hmm. with hand cannons i love one tapping you know thrall and acolytes and stuff like that and you know fall and seeing their head you know go up and smoke and stuff like that's the um what is it the i i don't know what how to describe it but it's that it kind of plays into the power fantasy yeah and the feeling you get from the visual cues Mm -hmm. the auditory cues the feeling from like the controller your your or the mouse and keyboard and where you're it's registering like that whole sequence of events to your brain is in my opinion unrivaled it it feels like call of duty has a very weird like sound and registration to me you know going way way back it's that your bullets when they hit somebody it makes like that hit marker yeah and it's it's semi i don't know like the gun sounds and stuff like in destiny are just amazing like the sound design mm-hmm. team fantastic and i agree i don't think a lot of games even come close to that i played a lot of halo 5 and there's an ungodly amount of weapons in that game too especially in warzone that there's like at the top layer there's like five that give you a sort of you know feeling that destiny has out of you mm-hmm. know, like hundreds, and that's yeah. and Destiny is like every gun. You know, it feels great. Swords feel um, like heavy to use. If the like the guillotine, I I don't know if this is just in my brain, but like guillotine feels different than the like temporal hook thing. Like it feels heavier. Yeah. Like yeah. there's there's weight to weapons. Um, how you feel in the subclass that you're playing i i think is another aspect of it there's so many things that go into it like borderlands doesn't do that 
for me at least um mm-hmm. and the slightest call of duty halo i don't think any of those first person shooters get close to it um yeah and i think that's and the like, reason why there's such a, a large fan base because the game does feel good to play at the base level it's when you start adding in like pve content and pvp and how things unfold with real people when you're playing does that make sense yeah maybe i would i would 100 percent love to see a bare bones game mode yeah for pvp where you know maybe no exotics no heavy uh ability regen is tied to your life so unless unless you dodge or something like you still have your class abilities or whatever but i think you should only get every across the board everybody should get a really low cooldown for a melee charge a grenade charge no super and let the gun play in the game thrive yep because that's what i love the most about the game i could care less about abilities like yeah. i i literally couldn't care less like the gun play as a, is what as I a love pvp the most. guy and i think we both kind of settle into the same thought process but when you're specking for you know your resilience and stuff like i prioritize recovery i don't even care about intellect because there's no point i can run like pump what is it the pump Mm -hmm. action thing action yeah or remote connection and i i remember watching drewski talking about it and like the amount of time it takes off for just one kill is insane Mm -hmm. so you do that and um you you cut that time like it's an artificial intellect thing that you don't even have to it's not hard to equip it's like three of the little artifact or the i don't know what that's called mod sockets energy nodes nodes yeah so that's not hard and um i mean there are exotics like i like bad juju i'll run bad juju on my warlock and um like five intellect and just and have bad juju and then a secondary thing on my bond that gives me more super bonus and resilience literally doesn't do anything except against thorn at a high level right and mobility i mean if you run a mobility exotic then it's kind of like yeah what's the point um and even discipline and strength i feel like can be supplemented in other ways and that high-end reward that you get in terms of cooldown isn't really all that much i i really wish they would have leaned into like if you want to have a discipline build if you want to be a grenade guy then you really have to lean into it by equipping Mm -hmm. you know like the 80 to 100 would be insane you know like in terms of cooldown but you have to sacrifice a lot to get there and then you get forced into choosing things that aren't rampage and kill clip and using demolitionists or something to to get faster or grenade cooldown I, i just wish they would have done that like devour if you run like a hundred percent um discipline and like high strength so you have devour up all the time with a rift and semi-decent high recovery and stuff you should feel almost unkillable you know i i have a um set built around devour yeah that is it's not okay i have um i run nezarek sin on devour with gnawing hunger that has demolitionist so if i have devour proct and nezarek sin um refresh it increases the recharge rate of all your abilities as long as you're getting void kills and while devour is proct you get increased grenade energy on kills doesn't mm-hmm. have to be void kills. It can literally just be all melee kills or whatever. You're going to get grenade energy back as long as Devour is active. Yeah. Pair that with Nezrex Sin using a void AR that also has Demolitionist. I can eat a grenade, get three kills with an AR, Yep. 
that takes like three bullets to kill and add to the body. And then I have a grenade back and then I can use that with the press of darkness or whatever. And then just kind of keep that loop going and just nonstop have grenade energy. And that kind of build synergy is awesome. I love it. Yeah. But it's very, there's not a whole lot out there that you can actually do that with. Yep. And so I hope that with beyond light coming and the new, um, like the UI, they, they also said they were going to be getting some more customization options for our subclasses. Mm-hmm. I think they've only shown off the stasis ones. But if like if I can pair different perks in with different subclasses, I that alone is going to add some longevity and replayability for me. It'll be a nice breath of fresh air. I can feel like I'm on a new subclass without actually being on the new subclass, you know? Yeah, I like, I wish or hope or pray that they do kind of refresh the other subclasses or maybe there's an mm-hmm. exotic or something that makes it worthwhile to not... I mean, people run uh, its top tree dawn with the movement dash. Yeah. Yeah, like there's no real point in running bottom tree unless you really need help with tracking on your flame sword stuff and then well of radiance is kind of meh in pvp anyway so uh people normally just avoid you or it, it doesn't really do much i think in terms mm-hmm. of map control either so them figuring out like i i can't imagine that the little guardian dot gg subclass graph is going to show like 80 percent like less than 80% of stasis when it comes out just because it looks so incredibly ridiculously overpowered and so different than everything else and the amount of customization and stuff that you can do with it from what we've right. seen. Like there's no reason. I mean, of course there are going to be people that still use Golden Gun and Bottom Tree Striker just because it's it's pretty good by itself. But I, I just can't foresee a lot of people using the older subclasses and plus it's they're brand new you know like stasis is so incredibly new and it's like getting a new car like you want Mm -hmm. to drive it and stuff and test it out you run it until you burn yourself out of it yep so that's like with that that new the sniper that they showed off the cloud striker I don't care what I'm doing. I don't care how much of a handicap I am in high-end PvE gear or, like, game modes, whatever. I'm going to use that. It's probably going to have really bad perks on it for, like, overall damage. But it's just one of those things. It's been so long since an exotic weapon or armor piece has actually, like, caught my attention. Yeah. And this is this is the first one in maybe all of Destiny 2. Aside from Sunshot, when we saw Sunshot like get Sunshot. teased yeah. at launch, yep. I wanted it. Like I I thought to myself, that's going to be my hand cannon. I'm going to use that all the time. Although D2 launch hand cannons were literally laughable yep. and Sunshot itself was a joke, um, I still used it like nonstop during the beta just because it had the aesthetic I wanted. It felt unique. It was yeah. exotic. And that's... I haven't had that feeling with any exotic since since then. And I'm super excited to use the Cloud Striker because, one, it's a sniper. It might be the first exotic sniper in D2 that isn't a heavy. Please, can we, can we stop putting exotic snipers in the heavy slot? And I'm assuming it's going to be arc damage. I don't know if you have a favorite damage type. Mine is arc hands down i love all arc weapons i love the color blue i love Mm -hmm. that like really light blue that electric blue i guess and so any weapon that's arc i'm automatically gonna like more not automatically but typically if it if it's a good looking weapon has good sound design and is arc i'm gonna keep it even if it's terrible like my favorite gun in d1 of all time was hereafter 
a lot of people that played D1 probably don't even remember what that gun was. It was an exotic sniper, energy sniper. It was arc damage. It's audio is still to this day my favorite audio from a gun in any game ever. Yeah, it sounds like... What is that sound? I don't even know what to call it or describe it. It sounds like a bass hit that drops through water yeah that's a good and i loved it so much yeah and the aesthetic of seeing a blinding light pop off when you got a precision kill i love something that rewards whether it's um, functionality or efficiency or even just looks something that rewards something skillful yeah like sniping somebody in the head or an ad in the head whatever yeah like, I loved Dragonfly so much, or Firefly in D1. It made any clip that I hit look so much cooler. Yeah. It just added a little bit of a little bit of spice, a little bit of flavor, you know? Yeah. And now with this uh, Cloud Striker, like, you get a lightning show. Like, it is Dragonfly except cool. And I think I was reading, like, the more precision hits you get, like, rapid hits... I don't know if it has to be kills or hits, but it summons like a whole lightning storm. So it's like you get the dragonfly proc with lightning. That itself is going to be cool. But like if you get a three piece in PVP, at least. Yeah. And then you get a thunderstorm to pop up and like do more DOT. That's going to be so sick. Yeah. Hopefully. And hopefully it's not something to go. Oh, this is super powerful. Because we inevitably get that too, where yeah. new stuff is so good, and then you know, four months later they nerf it, like Whisper of the Worm and all those other things. So I hope that that's not the case, and especially with how they've been treating everything recently, I don't know if nerfing things is what they're gonna do, like ever. So right, yeah, it it will be interesting to see, but unfortunately. We have to wrap this up. I have a bunch of wedding stuff I still have to do. Um, I will be gone for like two weeks, so don't expect an episode unless you and Kyle want to do one. That would honestly be pretty cool. Um, uh, or you could, you, you I could, could al- yeah, I could always just snatch the info f- from you. Yeah, 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 like yeah, uploading yeah. It. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We'll do that. We'll see. Um, Or even if you want to record like a a guest thing, um, you have to. Well, I mean, I'm also going to be busy. Yeah. Because I have Corey. Yeah. Our boy is getting married. And I would love to be there. Pain. But I have a stepbrother who's also getting married literally the same weekend. Pain. And so I'm going to be in Florida pray for me <laughs> i was about to say well it looks like the weather and stuff is gonna be it... i don't care about the weather in well florida. i know I'm it's just... florida eh. and with the virus going around Perfect i storm. think i think florida is still like the number one yeah hot zone for the united states but terrifying i'm looking at so i don't know the inside joke i'm looking at my Streamlabs alerts feed mm-hmm. and guess what number i see uh, 117. Yeah, that's insane. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening. You can uh, find me. Well, you can look in the description if you're uh, watching, listening on YouTube to our socials. Where can people find you, Matthew? Uh, mostly on Twitter at Hostile Galaxy, spelt hostile, normal, no underscore, no space, and then Galaxy is also spelt normally. How about you? Where can they find you? You can find me at poopboy.com and. Uh, on Twitter, just Hollow Tide. But if you guys are, you probably know where I'm at if you're already following the stuff. So it is witty, boy. All right, Matthew. I got to peace out. I love you. I love you too, bro. I love Pi. I love Ellie. Can you give Ellie a pat for me? I will. I'll give her. I'll give her a big hug. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Now this is now this is how we're gonna sign off from now on. Okay. You're just gonna okay, you're gonna look it. away from the microphone, uh huh, and you're gonna yell "cut" right now. Yeah, do it. All right, thanks for coming by, guys. I love you. Cut. <laughs>